Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another tutorial. My name is John, otherwise known as Megahertz, and today I'm going to be implementing a slide and crouch function in my player controller using Bolt Visual Scripting. If Bolt Visual Scripting is new to you, this tutorial will most likely be a little advanced since it's part 7 in my player controller series. I would strongly recommend either returning to the start of this player controller or even better going to my channel and learning Bolt with an easier build. If, however, you're not new to Bolt and would just like to know how I implemented the slide crouch feature on my player controller, then let's slide to this tutorial. Okay, you're going to need some macros that we made in a previous video. Um, for video 2, we're going to need the movement macro and the move variable transform macro, as well as the move variable force macro. If you want to know how these work, go to video 2 in this series. You're also going to need a run animation macro or a movement animation macro, which we build in video three. If you want to know how that works, go back to the third video in the series. And specifically to, to today's videos, you're going to need a slide macro and a crouching macro. And I will explain later on in the video how exactly these work. Once you get that completed, you're going to need to go to your input manager by going to edit and project settings. And then on the left side, click input manager the very top whatever that number is um, if it's 30 make it 32 if it's 34 make it 36 um, and uh, going down to the bottom you're going to have to rename the two new inputs that came up name one down um, and the other uh, you're gonna name crouch I have down set to s um, it's key or mouse button uh, on the x-axis and get all motion from joysticks on both of those the crouch button I have set to left control uh, you can set it to whatever you want, but it is case sensitive and it has to be in a similar format. Okay, you're also going to need four new animations, two for crouch and two for slide. You'll have a crouch idle with the sample set to six that should look something like this. If you don't have these sprites, you can get them from the link in the description below. And you should also have a crouch walk with the sample set to eight. Looks like that. Um, you should also have a slide start. This is the one that uh, just loops over and over again. The sample is set to 10. And then when the slide ends, um, this is the slide end. You can set that one to 12. That one is going to be very quick. You're also going to need two new animator parameters. One you're going to call sliding, and it's a bool, and the other crouching, and that's also a bool. When you get that done, you're going to need three new player variables. Click on player, go down to variables, and add three new ones. Um, one can slide, just like that, with a boolean, and just leave it, uh, actually set that one to true. And then you're going to need slide speed to float, set that to 10, and then slide time, that's a float as well, and set that to 0.8. Going to our animator, um, on the base layer, we made a uh, sub-state called regular mode. You should remember that. You should also see four new animations that we set up. Just go ahead and drag all four of those under regular mode. When they come out of regular mode, what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to set up uh, new sub-states by right-clicking and click create sub-state machine and just rename them right up here. Call one crouch and walk. Put uh, crouch idle and crouch walk in those and slide start and slide in you're going to make another one called sliding and put them both under there and then you're going to arrange them accordingly once you get all those animations made and put in the right places in the animator we are going to for the first time take advantage of the any state um, transition in the animator um, for just specifically for crouch idle and crouch walk what this is saying is essentially we can transition to crouch idle or crouch walk from any different kind of animation that we're currently running. And the reason why we're using this now is because in Bolt we're going to set up two different states. We're going to have a regular state and then we're going to have um, the crouch state. So you can move and run regularly and then you can crouch and move with a crouch walk. And because we're doing that it's very easy to say I want any state to transition to crouch idle or crouch walk because you can only really do that one way by getting into the crouch by pushing a specific button. So hopefully that makes sense, but we are going to need transitions for each of these and I went ahead and set up a slide just to show you exactly what you're going to need. The any state, any state to crouch, any state to crouch walk, which is uh, represented right here and um, crouch to crouch walk, crouch walk to crouch, crouch to idle, crouch walk to walk. You're going to need to set up each one of these uh, transitions parameters. 
So all of them have zero exit time unless otherwise stated. Um, and all of them have a offset to zero. So this is the crouch. This is the slide start to slide stop. Just really quickly, let me show you that, how that is set up. Uh, going back to animator, regular mode. I put that slide right here uh, under the slide substate. You have one, you can't go to slide end unless you go through the slide start. The reason why is because this is kind of a loop. As long as your slide happens and exists, well then it's going to keep looping the slide start uh, until it gets to the slide end whenever it's finished. So you're going to need a transition uh, from, I believe, run to slide start because run is the only way you can start sliding. So that's the only way that you're going to use that animation. Let me go back to those uh, slide transitions. That's what you're going to need. Slide start to slide stop and run to slide start. And uh, these following three, slide stop to run. So slide is ending to run, idle, and walk. All of them have an exit time of 0.6. So make sure you set that accordingly in um, your inspector that each one of these have an exit time of 0.6 and that you get in the correct conditions that I uh, have right here. The reason why we have this little exit time is because we want that little stand up motion to happen all the way before they stand up. So go ahead and get these put in and we'll continue with the bolt side of things. Just one quick thing that I forgot to mention, under sliding on the slide start, that one needs to be set to a loop because remember that one loops and slide end needs to have their loop time Uncheck. So just double click that animation in the animator and you should see it come up and just uncheck loop time. Okay, just one more thing I forgot to do. Uh, you go to your player and you're going to right click your player and create a, an empty object and let's rename that slide collider. And um, we're going to give a component to that. We're going to give a capsule collider 2D to that. And then we are going to change the size of that. So let's edit the collider for that. Uh, let's make it some kind of almost a circle and then let's slide that down on the player You can actually make this I believe uh, Long ways if you want so you can well, I think actually to do that you have to set it to horizontal Which that's fine. You can do that um, and then just if you want to you can just set it just like this um, It's not gonna really hurt anything if you make it kind of a uh, circular uh, we just need to make sure that it gets underneath this wall. As you can see for this map, I've kind of taken out two parts of the wall and uh, just kind of give you an idea. Uh, by the way, that is not going to be a uh, trigger. And make sure when you get it set to where you're happy with it, that you just uncheck that button right there. What that's going to do is it's going to disable it in the game until we enable it. So basically what we're going to do in the bolt side of things is we are going to uh, enable... Uh, disable this collider and we're going to enable this one but if you look I can't get through this little area and the reason why is because the grid um, it comes just below the player there so there's no way for me to get underneath that unless I slide or crouch so that's what we're gonna do with bolt right now okay if you followed the video earlier then you already have these macros made we need to put the slide macro that you made right here and then we're going to need to put the uh, crouch macro right down here. And then we're going to have to make transitions to and from uh, each one of these macros to and from the ma master macro that you have. Well, I just caught myself in a mistake. There is actually something you need to do with that slide collider. Instead of uh, checking, unchecking this box right here, you need to uncheck the capsule collider box right here. Um, so that way, whenever we go into our macro in just a second, it will be able to find this object whenever it says, hey, find the uh, object named slide collider and then disable or enable the uh, capsule collider on it. The other thing is this offset needs to be set to zero or else you might run into problems whenever you hit the wall. Um, going to, uh, from our transitions from master to slide, we just use custom ar uh, arguments, custom event arguments that uh, basically we just say, hey, whenever we push the buttons, let me go show you this real quick. Um, un under, our, under our main controller here, under our main state, uh, I have it to where whenever I press the down button and we're sprinting and we're grounded, then it's saying, hey, you can slide. So you're just going to have to go ahead and set that up in your controller. It should look just like that. And whenever that happens, it's going to it's going to trigger the slide custom event. 
So it goes to this right here. It says, hey, slide. It's gonna trigger the transition. You go into slide. And this is a little bit complicated, but it's really not that bad. Basically what happens is when you enter the state, it's gonna fire this argument right down here. But it's also, uh, first and foremost, it's going to uh, disable the capsule collider on the player, which is right here. It's gonna disable this one, just like that. And it's going to enable the one on the slide collider. So it's gonna enable that one. Um, and uh, it's going to set our animator bool sliding, which is right here, to true. And it's gonna say, okay, trigger that animation. Uh, when it gets down to here, so it's gonna do this and this at the same time, so I have a sequence there. Um, it's going to get the scale, uh, which is right here on our player. This little number right here, it's getting the X of our scale. If it is greater than zero, then it's going to um, it's going to do a, a macro that we set up before move variable force, which if you don't have that, that's what this looks like. It's very easy to set up. Um, make sure that your mode is set to impulse, not force, or else it's not really going to do anything. Um, and uh, it's saying if it's if if a is greater than b. In other words, if the X is positive, it's greater than zero, then um, it's going to shoot uh, our, uh, our times our multiplier. It's gonna shoot our uh, speed, which we have slide speed set up there as a variable. And I believe we have that set to 10. It's gonna multiply that times the direction, um, which is a one. And then it's going to shoot the player a certain way on the X. So either positive or negative, and once it's done, it's going to set the can slide uh, there, a bool right here to off. And then it's got a little timer set up before it goes to the end of slide. So you can uh, manipulate your slide time by going up or down right here. Uh, you can manipulate the distance by going up on the slide speed. Um, so it's gonna be shooting it left or right, either 10 spaces or more, depending on what you have it set as. And uh, then it's going to, after that's over with, after that slide time is over with, it's going to uh, disable the bull for sliding, and then it's gonna trigger slide end. So when slide end happens, it's gonna go right back to master. Very same thing for um, for crouch. So we have uh, our crouch button set up, so whenever we push down and we're grounded, you should have a macro that looks like this. If you don't, just go ahead and make that. It's very, very easy. It's just checking the variable of our player grounded. If it's true, well then it will trigger, and not only set the animator bull for crouching, it will trigger that custom event crouch, uh, which goes from here to uh, triggers this crouching ability. Now, uh, you might notice that I have movement set up. That's the only thing I wanted to be able to do when I crouch was just to be able to move, which is why I don't have any other abilities in that. When it goes into it, same thing. It, it, it enables the capsule collider, and when it exits, very same thing as the dash. Uh, excuse me, the slide, it just re-enables it at the end. Uh, I wanted to make it to where when you hit the crouch button again, you're crouching, or you hit the jump button, so you hit space bar is what I have my jump set to, uh, and it's grounded, then it leaves the crouch. So cool, cool, cool. You should now be able to slide and crouch and make it into and out of some pretty tight spaces. If you ran into any issues with this build, be sure to hit me up on Discord, and I'll try to give you a hand. In the next video, we're going to quickly try to tackle the dash mechanic. Hope to see you there.